because this has probably the most notes that I've seen out of any fragrance that I've ever come across. Hey, what's up guys, it's Josh here. Today I wanna to do a little review on this Dua Fragrances Drowning in Blue D Sauvage Fierce. Now, apparently this is kind of like a mix up between Blue D Chanel, Sauvage, Fierce, and I think um, Annie Neshane. Now, uh, Annie Neshane is the only fragrance uh, in this mix that I have not tried. There's an element in this fragrance that doesn't smell like Blue D Chanel, Sauvage, or Fierce, so I assume it's the Annie Neshane. It's almost got a little bit of a creamy vanilla vibe, and when I looked up Annie Neshane, apparently, um, it's very known for that vanilla vibe. I contemplated not even writing down all the notes for this fragrance because this has probably the most notes that I've seen out of any fragrance that I've ever come across, but let's jump right into it. <laughs> the notes we got here are Sicilian lemon, Calabrian bergamot, green notes, black currant, spearmint, pink pepper, grapefruit, petite grain, orange, Turkish rose, blue ginger, isoe super, black pepper, Sichuan pepper, lavender, nutmeg, fir, aquatic notes, geranium, rosemary, <laughs> jasmine, sandback, labanum, cardamom, patchouli, sandalwood, vetiver, benzoin, ambergris. <laughs> oak moss, Brazilian rosewood, incense, LMI, ambroxan, vanilla, lily of the valley, sage, cedar wood, and white musk. Now anyways guys, this fragrance just kind of smells like a lot of things in one. Um, it's really kind of hard to describe or um, it's really hard for me to give you like any specific nuances. I smell a little bit of fierce in the background. I smell a little bit of sauvage at times, but to me, it overall smells kind of like a general, likable, new age blue style scent. Now, it doesn't really smell to me like Percival or like uh, First Instinct Blue, but in my opinion, it's in that same ballpark. It smells new, it kind of smells fresh, it smells blue. Not overly unique, but very likable, very new, very fresh, very blue. And it's kind of weird because um, Fierce and Sauvage definitely do not have a blue vibe and I would say the blue vibe is probably one of the strongest things I smell here but if you consider that Annie Neshane apparently is blue, also Blue D Chanel is blue, it kind of makes sense why it definitely has a very very noticeable blue vibe. The pros is that it is very very inoffensive. I don't really think anybody's gonna have a problem with this fragrance. Even people who generally tend to dislike fragrances, it's kind of got this middle type of projection. Um, not really too, too light, but definitely not beast mode. So it's just very, very likable. At times, you're probably gonna get little hints of fierce and sauvage coming out, just a little bit of nuances, but I don't think it would be enough to trigger somebody's memory of, oh, that smells like fierce, or oh, that smells like sauvage. It, it might get a little bit of a tint in there, but overall, it definitely smells like its own kind of blue new amalgamation. Another pro of this is that it is creamy and fresh at the same time. Uh, that's probably the most unique thing I could say about this fragrance is that it has this, it pulls off this creamy vibe. You don't really think of blue, fresh, and then also creamy, but this fragrance actually does it. That's probably my favorite nuance here. And then the last pro is that I can smell the little nuances of all the fragrances that are supposed to be in here. So I do kind of appreciate that. And it's nice, like you'll smell like a tink of Sauvage, you'll smell like a tink of Fierce. Overall, it doesn't really smell in, like any one of those to me. Like again, it smells the most like a blue style fragrance more than any one, but I do appreciate that. You can pick out the little bits of Fierce and Sauvage in here, and I do appreciate that. All right, guys, let's jump into the cons of this fragrance. The main one I have is that it doesn't really have enough character. Now, I gotta say, when I first started spraying this, I was pretty unimpressed just because my standard for fragrances is so high, especially with Dua fragrance. My favorite version of Abercrombie & Fitch Fierce is Dua's version of Abercrombie & Fitch Fierce, and they also have Fierce Attar, which I really, really liked, but most of the community seems to like Fierce Attar much more than the original Fierce, so they have two bangers there. And then they also had Fierce Supernova, and I just prefer Fierce, Fierce Sitar, and Fierce Supernova because I feel like this has the least amount of Fierce. I almost feel like they should have probably lowered the amount of combinations in here just to kind of fine tune it because it almost feels like it doesn't really need a Sauvage or, I mean, it seems like you should have gone like Sauvage or Fierce. 
Uh, when you try to mix them, the two, it's just Sauvage is fruity, spicy, ambroxan, and, and fierce. It's just, it's on two different ends. So it's kind of weird putting them together. I felt like Fierce Supernova was a much better combination of Blend with Fierce. And I actually think it smelled a lot better because it was only those two fragrances. And again, this isn't a very bad fragrance at, at all. I know that when I looked up reviews online, people were saying that this was unbelievably high marks, five out of five fragrances, compliments, you know, as much as you could get. Just any good praiseable thing you could think to say about this fragrance, people have said. The things that people say about this fragrance, it might as well be the best fragrance Duo has ever created. However, I would go personally Fierce number one, Fierce Atar number two, Fierce Supernova number three, and this number four. I will say that this definitely has pretty low projection as well when you can when you compare it to Fierce and Fierce Atar, but I would say this probably projects just a hair more than Fierce Supernova, although I do probably prefer Fierce Supernova overall. This kind of has a light to middle projection, at least on me. I've sprayed quite a bit of this fragrance. I actually do, haven't done a fragrance review in like a week or a week and a half, so I've literally just been spraying only this fragrance, trying to get more of nuances with it. And again, I've grown to kind of like little bits of it but it overall to me doesn't have enough character it just is a little bit of a blurred mess to me personally although it's probably one of the best blurred messes that you could get but at the same time it just doesn't have enough character for me personally and it just smells like a general new age blue scent probably the best situation for this fragrance is the gym because it is likable you get all these nuances from these fragrances and it's also not overpowering as well it's probably perfect for the gym for a date I mean this is probably pretty good for a kind of like a day date it would be pretty solid for the office I mean, it would be okay for the office that it's light. It just has a little bit of like a sexiness and a freshness and a lightness to it that, you know, maybe you'd want something a little more robust for the office, but it's just a great um, everyday, you know, bright weather style fragrance. And I definitely think it is worth checking into if you want a fragrance with um, pretty much all these fragrances in one, because I do smell them all. And again, I haven't smelled the Annie and the Shane, but it, this, fragrance has almost like a vanilla creamy vibe to it that I would assume is from Annie Neshane. So anyways, guys, if I was going to give this a smell rating, I would give this between a 7.5 to an 8. Personally, a very solid middle of the pack. Likeability, I'm going to have to give this an 8.5. I just don't see very many people disliking it. The only reason I wouldn't put it up to like a 9.5 or a 10 is because it doesn't have like a, like a super complimentable DNA that I know of yet, like a Leighton or a Aventus or a Fierce. You know, it's I don't know if it's up to that level where you're going to get these crazy, crazy compliments, but I I'm almost positive nobody's gonna have a bad thing to say about this one. Longevity and projection, I'm gonna have to give this a solid seven, and I've said this a bunch of my videos before, but if a fragrance is really, really bad, I will rate it as low as like a 4.5 to a five for longevity and projection, so I give this one an even seven. So um, anyways, guys, I don't really recommend this as much for people who like Fierce, but if you, like I said, if you want a fragrance that really smells like all these into one, definitely check it out. I knew I was a little bit wary when I heard about it. Um, I trust Dua. Usually Dua is just fantastic. Any of the ideas that they come up with. I was kind of wary about this one and I guess it did what it said it was going to do. It doesn't smell bad, but to me, I just would like maybe one to two fragrances blended or maybe a, a different blend than this because it just comes out a little bit too bland and blue for me. But anyways, guys, let me know what you think of Dua fragrances. Let me know what you think of this fragrance down below. I'll probably be looking to get the Colden version next or pretty soon. I think that's one, the, one of the only other Abercrombie duos that I have not tried. But anyways, guys, we're on the road to 50,000 subscribers and I couldn't do it without any of you guys' help. You guys are the best. I'm having a great day out here. Hopefully having a great day at home. See you all in the next video. Peace.